Aries, let's jump into your reading right now. This is a general reading for the month of September. It is Vir Virgo season. And so the do's and don'ts for the month for you astrologically are do organize, make things meticulous. It will be very satisfying. Any health habits, anything, it's a great time to eat healthier and to be aware. Good time also for physical checkups and just getting your day-to-day -day routine so it makes you happy. Okay, so let's take a look and see what the energies are for you. Lovely. Okay. I will have an extended below if this looks like a complex reading. Otherwise, I won't, but I'll mention it if I will do it. You're really good. I mean, Aries is a sharp end of the spear, and you're really w accustomed to walking into situations and mastering things very quickly, like the fastest one to learn how to do something. You are tough to beat in any kind of competition argument or anything. You like to be the best. It's fun for you. You have oftentimes a very kind disposition with a lot of humor in being the best. But right now what I'm getting is that you feel a little bit out of your element. You just feel as though you're in a Davy and Goliath situation. I get that, you know, you're, you're very, very good at what you do. You're very much, a lot of people love you. And this support is what's going to power you through you may have a really dear friend that Cancerian energy is really strong in your chart. Right now you're feeling incredible amounts of love and gratitude for those around you who've given you support with whom you are coming to this reading looking for answers of how to have mastery over something. So it's a really good energy because Aries, this is you. You are the emperor energy. You are the emperor energy. You've got that big chess piece. You're going to make moves. You don't know what they are yet. In the recent past, somebody has really knocked you down. The devil energy is somebody something that looked really beautiful and good and glittery and all that beautiful hair. Look at how handsome this devil energy is, okay? Look at that. Like, who wouldn't like that devil? But if you look really closely, you have to look and see that that devil has strings attached. That devil is going to be in control of you. That devil, whatever it represents, is Capricorn. For some of you, it may be a job. The devil energy also is toxic energy. It's unhealthy energy. So what we're seeing here is this Capricorn energy. It's a punishing feeling. It feels like somebody wants to manipulate you and control you. Wherever you have Capricorn in your chart, Aries for you, if you are an Aries rising, it is your 10th house of career. The Eight of Swords right now says that the best that can be achieved is to stay quiet. It is a sense of being overwhelmed right now, Aries, but this is a really sweet time in your life to, you're gonna find out that this is going to be the best thing that you can do is to do nothing. You don't have answers yet. You don't know the lay of the land, so to speak. The Eight of Swords is self-imposed restriction. It feels like imprisonment, but it really isn't. The crows, if you see in this picture, the crows, when you look at this intuitively, the crows are giving you a message that you haven't heard yet, something that you're soon to hear. You can't miss it. There's no way that you won't get out of this energy. Look at this beautiful message. We have the Taurus Empress. So what spirit is telling you right now is that you are an empress. It's reminding you. You know you're an empress, even though you're very humble, Aries. People perceive you as incredibly beautiful, incredibly competent. And sometimes when we come in with this beautiful Empress energy, we, you know, we kind of are the most qualified, abundant one in the room. And so sometimes it can feel a little bit exhausting when we have lost our self-confidence. So Aries, I'm seeing this is very short-lived. We also have this beautiful energy of the Empress and the Emperor for you for the month. Divine partnership. Now, I'm going to say that it could be romantic, but it could also be a divine partnership where spirit brings you together with this Taurus and Aries energy 
to help give you a message about manifestation. Okay, to me, these are manifestation cards. The energy here that says what's going on right now is you need to look inward for answers. You need to do soul searching. The soul searching you need to do is what do you want your everyday life to look like? When you get up in the morning, your Monday through Sunday day, what do you want it to look like? Because until you know the answer to that, you'll be in this energy, okay? You, the why. When we look at motivational speakers, they'll say, what is your why? Okay, if you want to manifest success, why? What, what is your motivator? What triggers you? What is it that you're needing? And what is it that you're looking for? And that is your journey for the month of, um, for this time of Virgo. When we look at the, here you are, Aries. Here you are in the situation no situation is bigger than you. There's just not one. The Aries queen is all about business activity, all about manifestation, focusing on what she can do without any help from anyone else. So what you can manifest will be a solo journey right now. And that is going to be very powerful for you in this month. You do have a wish. Whatever your wish is, it will be granted when you gather this energy, come up with a strategy and have some answers, but your ships have arrived. So it's already manifested in the 5D. It's just like hang, low hanging fruit in the, five, in the 3D. You have fire in your belly, you're feeling really tired, get some rest, sleep well. You do not need to do anything at this time that's very specific. But I really want to look at the energy for you, Aries, to really look and see what this devil energy is, the heart of the fairy oracle. All right, look at this. This is a card that doesn't really have any meaning in the book. It really says that you can write your own ticket. You're here, you're confident, you know, you have this sort of masculine energy, this yang energy. And there's women all around you who are super supportive, but you play a leadership role in any situation. You are well liked by others. You are larger than life. Everybody loves your sense of humor. You're funny, you're kind, but people, you are a natural leader with this energy. So when we look at the devil, the devil can't beat you. The only way the devil can beat you is to convince you that you're a lightweight, okay? That's the only way the devil can win. So let's look and see what else we have, what we else we can learn about this devil energy for you. What is this devil energy for our beautiful Aries friends, please, spirit? of two minds okay when you look at this card right now you haven't made up your mind once you make up your mind and you feel confident that's when you will manifest that's when the devil will release you from the grips of devil energy we'll give you the table shot before we're finished so you can really take a snapshot of it why do we have the energy of the Eight of Swords. What is it that makes you hold back or what is it that you don't know yet? What are the crows trying to tell you? What are the crows trying to tell you about your everyday life? Monday through Sunday, what do you need to know? You haven't taken any action yet, it's good, it's all good. Divine timing is at work, okay. The hidden one. Ooh, there is a part of yourself you've not revealed to anyone. There is a dream or a hope, something probably from childhood, something about this, something that you've always wanted to do that you've never allowed yourself to do. Something that you know that you won't be a perfectionist at. Something that you worry will make you stumble. The hidden one. So there's a part of you that nobody else sees. Tell us more about the hidden one, please. Tell us more. There's a part of you that's shy, Aries. You are shy. Even though you're accustomed to taking leadership role, even though everybody knows you're a leader, you tend to be very quiet about it. The remembrance. Somebody in your life that you remember very well was absolutely a master 
you have a hidden desire to master something from your past. Whether it's a skill a parent had, whether it's an attitude, a philosophy, but you carry this deeply within your heart. You, you don't talk about it, but it's very meaningful to who you are. You're going to know what it is. I won't. It'll be different for everybody, but you're going to know what that energy is. Give us another card for the Eight of Swords. Give us advice now, Spirit. Give us advice about this. What should Aries do about this hidden desire? Can look at this one. The queen of the day. Bring it into the sunlight. Acknowledge it. Own it. You don't have to tell anybody. This is your daylight. This is your sunlight. You just go to it. You go do whatever it is that you want to do. Acknowledge in your heart of hearts that it doesn't matter how good you are. Because you'll do it for your own pleasure. What makes you excited when you wake up in the morning? What puts a bounce in your step? That is what you're about to learn. Why do we have the Hermit card here? Why do we have the Hermit card here? The Juggler and the Prince of Light came through. So the Hermit card could be the Prince of Light, right? It's a search for answers and it's discovering. Juggler says that you might have to go through um, some different... You might have to decide on a path and you might have to juggle your journey. You might have to do two things at once while you're searching for the light. So if you're in a relationship, you might have to juggle the idea of what you really want versus reality. If you're in a career that you don't like, you may have to continue working at that career until you can make some sort of transition over. But the Prince of Light assures, assures with a Virgo energy. Virgo is a problem solver of the Zodiac. So it shows that you have divine intervention coming in for you. You have a lot of help for you, Virgo. Why is a nine of wands here? I'm going to go ahead and give you the table shot, okay? The nine of wands energy. Why is nine of wands here for our beautiful Virgo friends? Why is a nine of wands here for Virgo? The rocks, okay. There is a part of you that feels untethered. There, the rocks, when we look at the rocks, the rocks is never really satisfied. There is either someone in your life who represents the rocks or rocks is more likely the shadow part of yourself that I think has been hidden. So there is a part of you that is never quite satisfied. And you're really actually fearful of it. You're really overwhelmed by it. You don't know what to do with it. But I would say that the rocks is a driving force in your life, that it pushes you ahead, that you're fearful because it's gotten you in some trouble because the rocks is sort of a king that's gone bad. However, if you look at it just as an energy, as a restless energy, as what the rocks is, with all the power and authority of the emperor, with all of the beauty and attractive power of Venus, with all the love in your heart, it tempers that rocks. It brings that rocks and you're afraid of it. There's a dark part of your soul that you're afraid of, but we all have shadow energy. It's typically the energy from childhood that may have been around us. So you may have had a parent, an uncle, or a situation in your life that was quite rogue, but it made you very tough. But you feel embarrassed by this part of your journey. You only put a very bright face on the situation. But your deep love of the rocks is what makes you hide this. But you don't have to hide it to yourself. You don't have to tell the world. You don't owe anybody a damn thing in terms of an explanation. Whatever this rocks did in your life, they still wore a crown. They still had incredible, incredible, magnificent skills. This person, even though they had a dark side, even though they created some havoc in your life, Sometimes it was overwhelming. 
and it was like a family secret, I think. But it doesn't matter. The rocks was glorious in his own right. The good part of the rocks was amazing. One in seven is eight. Eight is the number of stability and swing. This person made things happen. It's a beautiful energy. It makes you feel vulnerable. It makes you feel as though you want to hide it. But, you know, you don't have to hide it because it's only in your soul. It's only in your heart. It's in your business. I want to look at your ancestors, angels and ancestors card for a message about this rocks energy. Let's call on your ancestors to tell us who the rocks was or the divine intervention of how to harness all that was glorious and leave the wrecks rest behind so that you don't become the rocks. But there's a part of you that is driven by the rocks. There's a part of you that drives and strives to be something extremely magnificent. Let's see, what is that energy? Spring. See your seeds grow. So, you can be driven by rocks energy without being the rocks. That's what it's saying. Plant your seeds. Embody that energy. Unleash the wild within, and that is the embodiment, the positive embodiment of the rocks. Sometimes you feel like you have a false face. Sometimes you feel as though you have to juggle your identity to please others, but you don't. Make plans and focus the shield maiden. So that is your message about the rocks. I want to look at now the wisdom of the oracle and the beautiful energy that we have here from the wisdom of the oracle to clarify. What is the message for the Page of Cups for you, Aries? A change is in the wind. Ooh, that's exciting. Look at how exotic that card is. A birdcage on a zebra that's been built by hand. I wonder if the, cro the rocks would create a birdcage like that. So interesting. But it's sort of something like that. Whatever your version of the birdcage is, it is yours. Imagine. Fall in love with the things that you imagine. Here and now, take steps, little steps, baby steps every day. You have a deep knowing that you manifest something beautiful. Time for a nap? Well, that is reversed, but this is not a deck that we read reversals in. But I do think that you should take a nap whenever you need one. And let's see why we have the Three of Wands, which is your ships arriving in the harbor, Aries. The truth be told, it's right there for you. You're going to exchange your gifts for money. You're going to exchange your gifts in a beautiful dynamic of love and creativity. And you will meet yourself as your soulmate. Oftentimes our shadow side is expressed in our meeting other people. And what happens is we have soulmates that make us turn inwards and find ourselves. Sending you love, Aries. Take care. Thank you so much for joining me.